and welcome to another stop along the Mount Lindy Health 2020 virtual tour. We're taking you behind the scenes at some of the most high-tech spaces across the health system. Today, we are here with Fred Doucette, MD, Mount Lindy Physician Group, OBGYN, and Christopher Yingling, MD, Mount Lindy Physician Group, Urology. They're joining us here in the Da Vinci Operating Room at Mount Lindy Medical Center. Welcome to you both. Before we introduce you today, we're going to ask you to first please remove your masks. While these physicians would normally be seen in masks here on campus, today we will remove the masks as we practice physical distancing in order for you, our viewers, to hear them better. Thank you. Dr. Doucette, let's start with you. Please tell us more about what you do here at Mount Lindy Health. Uh, well, thank you for having me. I've been a staff OBGYN here for over 20 years. Um, I'm the Chair of Quality Council at the hospital, and I've uh, been doing robotic surgery since late 2011. In fact, that's when we launched the program. Um, I was one of the surgeons that was uh, the first one to sort of launch and start this program. Okay, very good. And Dr. Yingling, can you tell us more about yourself and what you do here at Mount Nittany Health? Yes, hi, I'm Chris Yingling. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, I'm one of the staff urologists here at Mount Nittany, and I've been here for just over seven years. I'm very fortunate because I got to follow along after Fred had started the robotics program and continue it, uh, helping to expand the, our work with the robot in neurology. Uh, we use it for a variety of cancer procedures and other uh, surgeries that we do in that. Happy to be here. Very good. In both of your roles, you use the Da Vinci Surgical System, which is robotically assisted surgery. Can you tell us what is robotic surgery? So robotic surgery is a bit of a misnomer. What it really is, is it's an assist to the surgeon. And our goal with surgery is to minimize blood loss and to minimize incisions and to expedite recovery. And the robot allows us to do laparoscopic surgery that previously was much more challenging to do without a robot. Essentially what robotic surgery is, is it's we make the movements, much like power steering in a vehicle, where we're turning a wheel that wheel isn't really turning your tires. It's telling a small computer to use a motor to turn the wheels. And this is very similar. So when we make motions on the robot in our console, it's making motions with laparoscopic instruments through eight millimeter incisions and allows us to make wristed movements and manipulate things such as sutures and needle drivers and uh, dissections uh, exceptionally well. So it's really an aid to make surgery easier and more accessible and to make it less invasive for the patient. Okay, that's great. So how exactly does it work? Can you show us today? We would love to show you. We'd like to give you a little quick tour around how the robot works, what the robot is. Um, and I think we'll start, we'll have Fred start to work his way over towards the robotic sure. surgery console. And I'll start while he's getting settled maybe by showing you the actual robot itself over here. So we look here, this is what we call kind of the robot. Um, it has a number of different arms which are protruded off of it and are controlled by the surgeon who's sitting in a separate console. Today we have a model that simulates what a patient would be like in this area, and we have a variety of instruments that can be inserted and extracted through small openings in the body in the, in the patient's body. Uh, these instruments have some really unique features. So Dr. Doucette mentioned that we have wristed motions. Uh, you'll notice at the end of this, this is an instrument, but instead of just being a standard long instrument, it actually can bend in multiple different directions and open and close. And it has an interface where it connects to the robot, where these circles are connected to a series of gears and pulleys that allow us to control it. So the robot just simply uses for Dr. Doucette's motions and allows it to become smoother and more efficient. So we'll work our way over towards the console. This is what we call our console. And Dr. Doucette's currently working just in the same position we would be working in a real surgery. And you'll notice his head comes against the machine at here, and he has two separate cameras, one for his right eye, one for his left eye, which allows him to have 3D vision. But we also have a very clear screen there with excellent depth perception. And his hands are working down here, and he can move his fingers and his hands in any direction, and each finger is controlling one blade of the instrument, so if you think of it like a pair of scissors, each blade moves independently and you can control it. There also are a number of foot pedals which allow him to switch from instrument to instrument and to reposition his camera, focus his camera, or use even electrical currents to seal blood vessels or any other 
tissue that we need to address. Uh, it gives us complete control over multiple arms at the same time, uh, and from a surgeon's standpoint, lets us do it in a really comfortable position. If you notice in the room, we have a variety of cameras that are, excuse me, TV screens that are around, so that the assisting staff, where we always have an assistant at the bedside, um, who can help us actually exchange instruments or pass instruments in and out of the, of the patient. Um, they can see everything that we're doing on these screens. And this is a similar view to what Dr. Doucette is seeing right now while he's looking through his camera. Most importantly, you can really see he's flipping a penny around there. You can get an idea of the size of these instruments. These rubber bands are very small, um, but the dexterity of the, of the robot allows us to control those motions in a really tiny space. So now you're looking at the model of the patient and can actually see in real time, in real life, the size of these instruments and uh, the ability to move these structures around. assisted surgery for patients? Well, I think it's been um, really important over the last eight years what we've had. And not only is it, I mean, there's three areas. One is the patient, which is always the most important. I think for the patient, they get a less invasive, less chance of infection, smaller incisions, faster recovery. And recovery is several of those. Faster recovery from the hospital, uh, up and moving around sooner to avoid complications and going home quicker. Uh, and most of our surgeons going home the same day, a few hours after surgery. I think the second aspect is um, for the overall area for the community to realize this hospital's invested in the, the best technology and the latest. And it's not just um, for show. It has a real benefit to the patient. But it, to me, it shows a real commitment to the community. And then the third thing that people don't always understand is that the latest um, trained doctors, the youth, the future doctors of our community uh, in gynecology and um, in neurology are all trained heavily on the robot. And uh, it, not only do they expect that to be there for their um, next job, which would hopefully be in Mount Nittany, uh, but it would be very difficult to recruit them without it because other institutions have that. So it's a real pathway for not only the patient now and the community, but the long-term success of growing our physician staff to meet the needs of its population. Okay, very good. All good all around. Uh, Dr. Yingling, we have um, one final question for you. You showed us a lot about the robot and how it works. Can you tell us what procedures specifically work best as robotically assisted here at Mount Nittany? Here at Mount Nittany, the bulk of the robotic surgeries right now are done by urology and gynecology. Um, Dr. Doucette and his gynecology colleagues, they remove the uterus, they remove ovarian cysts, they also will remove thyroid tumors and endometriosis. I do other laparoscopic uh, surgeries in the abdomen. Um, for urology, we use it for almost all of our cancer surgeries. So we use it for removal of prostates for prostate cancer, bladders for bladder cancer, um, and where it's really helpful for us, kidney tumors, oftentimes we can remove the tumor and preserve the rest of the kidney because of the freedom the robot allows us to reconstruct the kidney. Um, also used by some other specialties, thoracic surgery and increasingly general surgery, um, as well as ENT can use it. Very good. Well, thank you so much. Uh, that's about all the time we have for today. Thank you again, Dr. Dusan and Dr. Yingling, for your time and your expertise. Thank you for everyone for tuning in today. Please be sure to follow our Facebook page for our next virtual tour stop. And for more information about the services that we featured today, please be sure to visit mountnitney.org.